Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a mixed media canvas with a poinsettia on it. This is for the Video Hop Artsy Second Sunday. Um, happens every second Sunday of the month. And this theme for this month, uh, holiday, those type of things, you know, winter, holiday, that type of stuff. So I decided again to work with red and green because I think poinsettias are really pretty as a flower that blooms in the winter, which is unusual. And I thought it would be fun to make something with that. So I'm starting out my canvas. This is a five by seven wrapped canvas that's been pre-gessoed. And I am using Liquitex Matte Gel Medium. It's a thicker matte gel glue type stuff to attach lots of different little pieces of greens and reds uh, collage paper. These are all different types of things. Maybe it's just got some color scraped on it. Maybe it's a gel print. Maybe it's been stenciled. Maybe it's got sprays on it. Maybe it's got acrylic, who knows. They're just sorted into color and I have these color baskets a small one with smaller pieces and a large one with full sheets on my shelves. And that's how I organize all of it. I'm just tearing them into smaller bits and attaching them. A lot of them are deli paper and deli paper doesn't really like to lay down flat. It kind of wrinkles a little bit, even with a fairly um, non-liquid medium like gel medium. So I, you'll see me continuing to press down with my fingers and try to get uh, get the wrinkles out as much as I can. I have a lot of them that have really interesting pattern and I, I like it. And I like all these different colors of green. Um, this is one of the only ways uh, to make a background that I know where you can get so much different variation very quickly. I'm using a Distress Collage brush and that also helps to press down the paper. If it's a thicker paper, I turn it over and I spritz it with some water, which is what that pink thing is on the right. And then I put a little matte medium on it. And that kind of helps break down the, the paper fibers and help it lay down flat. I'm just trying to get everything glued down with no bubbles and as little wrinkles as possible. I do have a few wrinkles on this one because of the deli paper, but uh, other than that, you know, they're not, they're not noticeable. So I started at the top and did quite a bit of green and then I realized I needed to get some more reds in there. So I am now grabbing out of the red basket, tearing up those pieces. And there's also, I mean, there's pinkish reds, there's yellowish reds, there's orangish reds, you know, there's a lot of color variation within each color family. So I'm trying to grab different ones to get different bits and really make it more interesting that way. Of course, I'm getting lots and lots of matte medium coating my fingers. I did use some Art Guard lotion before I started this process because I knew I was gonna get medium all over my hands, paints and mediums. And those things do have chemicals in them that might not be good for you. <clears throat> and also, of course, Hard to get off if you don't put something on your hands first, even if it's just plain lotion, it will help uh, when you go to try to wash all that stuff off. Because that's just the hazard of being an artist. <laughs> your hands are always a mess. And obviously that's not the only profession that you get messy hands, constantly messy hands. So I'm also making sure that all the edges around the sides of the canvas have paper on them as well because I want this to be able to just be hung up without a frame. And since it has color all the way around, it's not necessarily necessary to frame it. You can just use a, a push pin uh, type thing and push it into your drywall and hang it up. Super easy if you have drywall. Of course, if you got an old plaster house, you probably wouldn't want to put a push pin in it. <laughs> Maybe uh, one of those command strip hangy uppy things. That might be better. I also did a few little areas towards the, the corner here down at the bottom that are more yellowish, goldish colors. Because I was thinking that might be where the center of my flower would end up. And... Those little bits in the center of a poinsettia kind of look like yellow balls. 
I haven't actually had a poinsettia for a long time. I know people used to get them at Christmas and then they would just stay in their house and grow all year and then bloom the next Christmas and I've never been successful with that. <laughs> I've, they've always died after Christmas. So then I just grabbed a little bit of red paint and kind of touched up areas where maybe uh, there was some bleed through or I thought I needed a little bit more red. Just because there was a few white spots, especially around the edges. And I did that with my finger. And I gave that a good dry. Then I'm taking a pastel chalk type uh, implement here in white. And I'm kind of drawing out my petals and leaves. Uh, poinsettia flowers, uh, the center part turns red or pink or white or whatever color, but then it continues to have these petally things all the way out that are still green. So I always wonder to myself, hey self, are those petals or are they just leaves that have changed color in the center of the plant to make a flower? I don't know, they're the same shape and they just, they're just a different color. Strange plant, but pretty. And they've bred them to be everything from white to light pink to to uh, red and variegated and you know there's all kinds of them out there very pretty you just go out to this to the home store right now and I bet you'd see a ton of them so now after I've drawn in with my my chalk pastel now this this chalk pastel is not going to stay on there right it's going to come off really easy I could wipe it off if I wanted to with the baby wipe so I am using some white gesso mixed with some dialuride yellow fluid paint to make kind of a, a goldish colored paint. And I'm going around everything and kind of filling in the background and allowing the, the areas that are not painted to come forward. So I'm getting some reds and some greens in that way and giving them more shape because the way it was, it was just, you know, a bunch of random papers on a, on a canvas and they had no shape. So by drawing out the leaves and petals, I can paint around them. And, um, I'm all, I also have a baby wipe and I'm kind of, uh, wiping back as I go. And then at some point I will, after this is dry, I will really wipe to make sure that I've gotten all the chalk pastel off. Um, whatever isn't now embedded in the acrylic paint. But I don't want the white on there. I just want to clean it up as much as possible. And kind of on the edges, I want it to show a little bit uh, the original collage. So I'm kind of just, you know, making sure that not everything is obliterated. I mean, why do all that collage if you're just going to wipe it out, right? <laughs> And then I add a few places where the, the color is a little bit more to the yellow side by mixing in a little bit more yellow to white ratio because I think it's interesting. A little bit of color variation. And after that, I make sure that it's really dry again. And then I have these uh, pencils, these new pencils that my friend Peg sent me. They are Stabilo All pencils. And you know, I use Stabilo All black pencil a lot because it's highly water reactive and you can blend it really easy. Well, she sent me the whole set of, of red, yellow, orange, blue, green, um, brown. There's all the colors. I mean, well, that's, that's not that many colors, actually. You know, when you have a set of 64 something, a few... A few pencils in, in colors are maybe not that crazy, but they are really blendable and there are pencils so you can make them nice and sharp. And so I'm adding definition with them and then going back in and blending to uh, make my shapes seem, I don't know, they, they look, they weren't, they were just blending in too much. They weren't precise and I kind of wanted it to look like a stained glass uh, window or something where every, I mean, obviously I'm not separating it by a black, but the idea of having different pieces separated 
with the color in between uh, reminded me of a stained glass window. So I was trying to just give them more definition with the pencils. And I used the red on the red petals. I used the orange around the circles in the center and then I used the green uh, around the ones that look like leaves, the green ones. So blending them in. And I have a lot of color variation because of all the collage underneath and a little bit of pattern and it just, I like the look of it. That's, this to me is what mixed media looks like. Got a lot of layers on there, a lot of different pattern color variation, but yet made into a cohesive something, you know, so you can see what it is. And I'm using my, my uh, water tank brush to blend. Now this is going to need to be sprayed, spray seal, and I will use a glossy spray seal and give it, you know, take it outside and give it a few coats because now I'm using another media. Uh, this is watercolor media. These paints are called Starry Colors, I think, and they're from uh, Kiritaki. And I decided that since this was a holiday piece, Christmas or whatever holiday, winter holiday, you want to you, you want to use poinsettia plants to celebrate. Um, <laughs> that you might want some shimmery stuff. So I got out these very shimmery uh, shades of gold and bronze paints. I just got these. Wanted to play with them. They are very full of mica. I used the bronzest one um, in the centers of the flowers. I used the one that's pearl on the leaves, and then I used something in between on the the petal, the petal leaves. Then I thought maybe I just needed a little bit of dark somewhere, you know, just to kind of add a little bit of definition. So I, I used some Neo Color 2 uh, dark red type crayons, put those on, blended them. Then I got back out the shimmery stuff and blended it in too because once I put that Neo Color 2 on there then it becomes matte again. So I needed my shimmery colors back to blend a little bit with because I do want it to be shimmery in some places. <coughs> I also put some gold dots all around because once I put the shimmery paint on the petals, then everything else seemed really flat. So I used the gold to kind of go around the edges. The last thing I did was to use a gray uh, color wash brush. This is a Pentel color wash brush and it's the gray one. I tested the gray and the brown there on my paper to see which one was darker. And I picked the lighter one, which is the gray. This already has some type of watercolor in the handle and then it has a little brush and I just used that to add a little bit more definition. So I hope that you've enjoyed my project. Please go to the next person in the list by using the links below the video if you didn't attend the premiere. If you're at the premiere then there'll just be another one to go. So um, there it is, shimmery shimmery and of course like, subscribe, comment, share. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.